Hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you how to replace the head gasket on this Farmall 140. Uh, a lot of the Farmall tractors, as far as I understand, had this same engine. It's the International Harvester C123 engine, and a uh, really good reliable engine. However, it was stuck, and I ended up getting it unstuck. But when I put it back together, I reused the head gasket because I didn't know any better. Um, but it was actually kind of nice to like run it without putting a brand new head gasket because I was able to fix a whole bunch of other problems. Um, and now I kind of know that the thing is actually worth fixing. So now I can start putting money into some of these new seals and gaskets and things. So I bought a new seal kit off of uh, Amazon and uh, head gasket. And we're going to go ahead and change that out. Basically get your shrouds off and we're going to pull this all apart here and separate the block from the head so made this custom tool out of this random piece of metal <laughs> probably can't tell what it is um, and the coolant actually looks pretty gross so I might not reuse it but I am going to catch it um, and I just loosened this hose clamp here and then I'm just going to let that flow out of there and catch it in this bucket hopefully not make too huge of a mess mm. Doesn't even smell good. So, yeah. Just gonna get this uh, valve cover off. There's just those two nuts on the top. So there it is with that cover off. We're not gonna remove these two nuts. There's a nut here I removed as well. And should be able to just remove this whole thing. It'll kind of pop up as it's coming loose. Reason being the uh, spring tension on all the valves. We'll kind of just push it up. And there it is. Can set that aside. And then all of these uh, rods seem to be the same length. So they'll all just kind of come off. They all just lift out of there. They should look nice and straight like that. But it's kind of cool how they just drop in and the camshaft just kind of works them up and down. I don't think you actually have to take this manifold off unless you want to. Um, I don't really want to so I think I'm just going to disconnect the carburetor bolts right there and then I'll just let all of this stay together. Oh and we'll have to take off this hose right here and unbolt either this or unbolt this from here but I think we'll just unbolt this so we don't disturb that seal. We're just loosening the bolts and each one as it loosens it makes like a very distinct tink. Oh. and it really feels like they're breaking off but I don't think they are so that's actually all of them cracked loose okay so Yep, that thing is loose. Notice how it didn't really like click when I popped it off. I believe that's because it never really was that adhered. Obviously I pulled the spark plug wires as well. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, it looks kind of bad. Oh, that's so heavy. Really doesn't look too bad in here. So I'm just using some brake clean and some 220 grit sandpaper to clean the surface of that. You want to be really careful to not obviously damage it. So you wouldn't want to use anything like on a power tool or something like that. Um, you just want to be really careful and methodical and slow while cleaning that. very gently running this tap down into the hole to clean out the threads. Should be using a, a thread chaser instead. Uh, so I'll just have to be really intentional that I don't cross thread anything. That would be really bad, to say the least. But it's going down in really easily and backing out really well. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. But you can see it does bring up quite a bit of junk. And then I've been using this uh, 
little wire brush. Run that down right into the bottom of the hole. And as I'm coming up with it, I just suck up the dust and debris. And then I have one of the bolts with threads that I kind of cleaned, brushed up. And we'll just run that all the way down and up. If there's any like liquid down in there, I've noticed that it like squishes up. And I might run that in and out a couple times just to clean it up because you can put it on this clean part of the rag here, swipe it, and it is bringing up quite a bit of stuff. As for the cylinders, I just put them all so that they were about level with each other and then we'll just have to wipe the contaminants out of each cylinder before we throw the head gasket on and put it back together. So I'm deeming this surface clean enough. So I also decided to replace this piece of tubing because it was about to split um, and it would be annoying to change it afterwards and also got the bolts all cleaned, cleaned all the threads and just kind of wire brushed them a little bit. So we'll just set it down on there. Both surfaces are completely prepped and then we'll be able to tighten in the bolts and get it kind of centered out exactly where it needs to be. I also took the thermostat out and cleaned it. That's so cool. Wait, brushed it off. On it. Not very hard, but... Yeah, it's kind of amazing how nice it looks still. Yeah. I think already looks good. Do I go on that side? Yep. the carburetor is over here it's kind of it's okay the carburetor will just flex down so it's kind of sitting down now so we'll have to get the carburetor studs dropped in there so it'll actually sit down all the way we'll just carefully get it it's okay if it scoots back and forth a little bit while we get it exactly where it needs to be that bolt started in quite nicely Kind of interesting because four of these bolts are just exposed to like the rain and everything. Like they're not under the valve cover. Yeah, so like if it was sitting outside with no cover, it's pretty bad for it. So I have the instructions pulled up here. I'll put an overlay so you can actually read what I'm uh, doing. But basically, they just want you to line it up like we did, and then. Uh, don't tighten it to the full specification immediately. We're going to do it in three steps. So we'll probably do like uh, 30 the first go around and then another 20 to get to 50 and then another 30 to finish off um, to 80. So here's the order that they've got it marked out in. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and then repeat, adjust our torque wrench, repeat, adjust our torque wrench, repeat. And then the cylinder head will be fully seated and uh, squeezed down. They don't really mention anything else about it. And we know that it's supposed to go to that torque specification because our engine serial number is 97995 and there's a cutoff listed in here. Listed under nut and bolt torque data, foot pounds. For a C123, serial number 65001 and up, 80 to 90 foot pounds. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do 20 pounds for the first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we'll increase, uh, we'll just increase to 40, 40 pounds and repeat.
We're just gonna increase by 20 again. 60. Now we'll go to 80 and kind of see how it feels. Remember the range is 80 to 90 foot pounds. All I can say is 80 is less than I expected it would feel like. I think we'll go 85. All right, that's it. Down to its new specification. So run our torque wrench back down to zero. Relax the springs. I don't know if you guys do that, but we do that. There it is. I don't really think, I don't know, it should be right. I almost feel like it needs to be tighter, but I think that's, that should be it. So now we just uh, throw all the stuff back on that we took off and put some coolant in here. We should be pretty much golden. Wiping off the connecting rods. Getting them dropped down in there. Hoping that the, I'm noticing that the gasket almost seems to kind of hold the rods in weird positions. So hopefully that is not a problem. So I just drizzled a little bit of oil over everything so it's nice and well lubricated. It's nice that this kit also came with the valve cover gasket. Because the other one was very garbage. So I just did a retorque on the head gasket bolts, or the head bolts rather, because I it feels suspicious that it could start leaking. We heard a funny noise too. Heard a funny like <laughs> noise. So just making sure that the cam is in good shape. And then we wanted to see uh, where <laughs> the oil comes out. If there's oil like like that ejects somehow. Yeah, I'm curious how these get oiled all throughout there. I had put oil on them previously, but oil obviously gets up in here somehow. So we're gonna, for fun, run it for a moment without the valve cover. I think that it should be fine. It's in neutral, choke it. That spring is going in a slow circle. Oh, it actually died. Yo, you should slow mo video. I was a hundred percent right, Ruben. So, well, I don't know exactly where it's coming that out. That one's dripping. Oil. But it's coming out of all these little holes that I thought it was coming out of. You should ah, slow motion. Ah, and it just motion. oozes down and drips down on and the. drips down across. So these. this side must not matter as much. I think there's a hole underneath this that yeah. is pumping up into into here, and, and then it's there's flowing an oil out here. pump way down here, pumps it up through this filter, and then into all 
the various spots it needs to oil. Also got the covers thrown back on, so pretty much ready to drive this thing out of here. And I actually added this piece right over top of what was there before. You can see I just put four little tack welds to hold it on there. But that'll help keep rain out of this and just blast the exhaust back. A flapper would be good, but I don't have one right now. And that piece of furnace exhaust tubing stuff is pretty fine. So I could not find the original guard that went on here, so I ended up just making my own out of some sheet metal. So I've been using the tractor all summer to do work around my place, uh, primarily just using this sickle mower to cut grass and weeds down. But so far it has not started leaking anywhere around the head gasket. So I think that it was a successful installation. Um, I do not think I've put, you know, more than like 10 hours on it probably though. So really haven't put that much time on it. it did run into a tree and bust the exhaust off. Well, a tree branch rather, which was kind of a bummer. But uh, yeah, overall I'd say it was a pretty successful replacement. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and found it either interesting or useful in, you know, if you're doing the same project. But I think that's pretty much all I have to say. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you later. Say, I, I got a quick question. I think you're probably the right guy to talk to. You've got uh, a lot of those farm all tractors, don't you? Uh, yeah, I think I'm 20 up now. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a lot more than I expected. Um, yeah, well, I've got a farm all 140 and I need to swap the head gasket on it. So I've taken it apart down to the, I just need to put the new head gasket in. But I was wondering if you knew like how many foot pounds those are supposed to get torqued down to. Or do you just tighten them randomly? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I find the book and tighten them up as it says. Sure. Um, but no, you don't You don't want to just tighten them up randomly. There's, yeah. there's a rhyme and a reason to it. I bet you can find it all on the internet. Yeah, that's that's probably... I'll probably do some more digging online and see if I You're, can't uh, come up with it. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have a couple super... I actually have a, a cub, a bee, two super C's, uh, two H's, an M, a Super MTA. <laughs> yep. Uh, six fifty six, a six sixty six, a seven oh six, an eight oh six, a seven sixty six, a ten sixty six. That's amazing. A fourteen fifty six, another ten sixty six. <laughs> that's that seems like <sighs> about the right number. Maybe you need a couple more, but it sounds oh, like you I don't saw have this, a one forty. Uh, Maybe you need this tractor. <laughs> I do not have a 140. Oh uh, man! <laughs> everything around it, though. That's okay. I, I'm I'm over those small ones. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got a five, 560, a 1456. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I oh, saw I this. An F20. I forgot that one too. <laughs> I saw this thing the other day that said if you can remember how many guns you have, you don't have enough. <laughs> so well, it's. A... I think I'm. I think I'm missing. Oh, I. I think I'm missing a couple, so I'm probably about to that point. Right, yeah. So you once you can't remember how many you have, that's when you maybe have enough. So You're, you're right on track, and yeah. so am I the way it sounds. Exactly. Man, it'd be fun to come check them out sometime. Um, yeah. Someday if you're out tinkering on them, let us know. We'll stop by. Be a, yeah, it's, a, it's an affair getting them out of the shed, that's for sure.